Welcome to the Wednesday, June 6 meeting of the Amherst Planning Board. That's June 6, 2018. So our first order of business is approval of minutes. So we have the April 4th minutes in front of you. And they were also, e yes? You have two sets of minutes, May 2nd that were in your packet and April 4th that were emailed to you this afternoon. Yep, so we'll do the April 4th first. I move we approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second. Any discussion? Um, seeing none, all in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Passes 5 0. Um, May 4th, or May, I'm sorry, May 2nd minutes. And I wasn't there for this one, so I have nothing to say. But um, is there a motion to approve? I move we approve. Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Can see it. Hmm. You said so they're hearing, email. They're in your packet. The May 2nd one? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. You see them now? Yeah. We'll give you a minute to look at them. Yeah, yeah I looked at these. Sorry. I'm good. You're good? Okay. Yes. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Abstention? 401. So that brings us to our 705. Yes. Um, so despite a slightly late pushback from the gate, we made up for it with Tailwind. Um, so this is our Scenic Road joint public hearing with the Tree Warden. And I have a preamble here. In accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5C, <coughs> Scenic Roads, and Chapter 87, Section 3, Shade Trees, this joint public hearing between the Planning Board and Tree Warden has been duly advertised in the Daily Hampshire Gazette and posted in the Town Hall. This is regarding the Scenic Road tree removal to allow construction and drainage work in West Bay Road from the Town Line to Gold Way. The public shade trees impacted by this project include the following trees, and these are diameter at breast height, a 10-inch Norway maple, an 18-inch red maple, a 20-inch black birch, an 18-inch red oak, a 7-inch red oak, a 20-inch red oak, a 12-inch pin oak, and a 10-inch pin oak. So normally, normally, we start off with, well, there's a site visit. Well, should we, we should get the... Allow the tree warden to explain the tree what's being proposed. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, Al Snow, tree warden. The uh, project, um, the road project that is taking place on this section of West Bay Road, essentially from um, the Hadley Town Line to Gould's Way, um, is for fixing some road um, drainage problems and sort of flat, I'm gonna use some layman terms here, flattening the road out a little bit and um, trying to make it a little bit straighter. Um, and improve the drainage. So it's, if you're familiar with the section of road, it's very tight, um, there's a very sharp corner. There's no shoulder to stand on, on the inside curve there. Um, and it's not very pedestrian or bike friendly. So the goal of this project is to um, widen the road a little bit to improve uh, bike lane on both, <coughs> uphill, both uphill sides of this turn and hill on uh, West Bay Road, so that uh, the climbing lanes essentially will have a bike lane. Um, and there'll be a little, it'll be a wider space for uh, pedestrians on the shoulder as well. But not a, not a sidewalk on this section. Um, so most of the trees that are being impacted actually aren't being impacted physically by the road, they're being impacted by the improvement to the drainage swale that um, is on the uh, south side of the road. So, and I, I will add that I did misidentify one of the trees uh, late this winter when I first looked at it. In haste, I identified it as a Norway maple, and it is a uh, ten. Sorry, it is a 
10 inch ash tree, and not an Oremig. Whoa. So, my apologies. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Um, there was a site visit this morning, yes? And who was on that? Mr. Crowner and Mr. Levenstein, but Mr. Levenstein is not able to come to the meeting tonight. Okay. You want to report on the site visit? Um, there's, there's actually a lot of trees along the southern edge, especially um, west of Spencer Drive, which is the um, entrance, I guess, to Applewood. Um, not uh, only a fraction of the trees are, are proposed to be removed, and many of the trees, not all of them, but many of the trees that are being proposed to be removed um, didn't look so great to me anyway, as far as the shape that they were in. And oftentimes you let the public sh shade tree committee say a few words? I'm Henry Lappin, the chair of the Shade Tree Committee, and this is the motion we uh, voted on and approved. Um, while the mission of the Tree Committee is to protect trees, we realize that this project, road project, is for the good of the community, and we accept that these trees will need to come down. However, we urge that this project and all future road projects provide for and fund replacement trees. Thank you. So we'll do discussion uh, of the planning board. Bob? Um, I'd like to know if, if the project does include uh, replacing the trees. Um, this project does not include funding for replacement trees. Um, we still have funds available in our tree planting fund, so any replacement trees that we do there will come from our tree planting fund. Those funds will end um, at the end of this planting season. So. so I take it the applicant is the town? Correct. So I'm curious if there's, if there's precedent for, in a situation like this, the town moving funds as the tree committee uh, recommended specifically for replacement trees related to the removal? I think um, the discussion um, that took place at the shade tree meeting was for future projects um, that we make sure that uh, we're requesting that as we develop these projects for a new road, for road improvements and things like that, that we, we leave money in there for the replacement of trees that are cut down. Well, so I think um, <clears throat> if, you, if you didn't know that trees were being taken down, you probably wouldn't notice it afterwards, except that um, a lot of the trees that are, that are being kept are going to be trimmed back, so, so there will be less of a canopy. Um, I think the only one that you might actually miss is if you look on the, on the diagram, there's, there's a, a cluster that's on private property, remove group of private trees to allow for grading a proposed sidewalk. Um, that's, that's actually not part of this hearing, but if that's, that's the one that, that people might actually miss it. Let's go on. The other ones you probably wouldn't even miss. Yeah, I would just add to that, if I could, um, that we will be lifting the crowns to maintain proper road clearance there. <coughs> trees have grown over the years down into the road, and we really do need to lift that up to get our proper road clearance. Um, open it up to the public. Anyone from the public want to comment on this? Seeing none, back to the board. Um, I, I guess I'm confused by the diagram. There's only two trees that I see marked, and there's eight trees. Flip it over. The dark green ones. Oh, I thought those were in private. Let's flip it over. Oh, it's further down, I'm sorry. Double-sided paper. Oh, I see. <laughs> Anyone ready to make a motion? 
I move to approve the removal of the trees. Close public hearing. And close public hearing. I second that. Motion and a second. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor, raise your hand. Pass is 5-0, five, uh, five then Mr. Snow uh, also weighed in that he voted in the affirmative. So I'm in favor of removal of these trees. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to move on to... Agenda. Um, we'll do planning and zoning. Did the zoning subcommittee meet? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we we just basically started discussion of of a work plan or work list that that we would submit to uh, the new council when it is seated uh, for um, a potential. Uh, zoning initiatives that they might undertake. We just began the discussion. Comments? Thank you. Public comment on planning and zoning issues? Anything under other? Um, town meeting, debrief after annual town meeting? Um, we are very pleased that, that we finally passed the inclusionary zoning fix that we've been working on for so many years. Yeah, that was, uh, that was terrific and by an uh, overwhelming you know, majority. So it's good to see that collaboration work. Thank you so much for... Any other discussion? Okay. Topics not reasonably anticipated regarding town meeting? Nope. Um, old business, signing of decisions. We have four decisions for you to sign. Um, some members have signed, it, signed them already at the um, zoning subcommittee meeting. There's one for Paul Cole for the sidewalk or uh, crosswalk issue. And then there are three for um, Dwight Scott and the All About Learning Preschool. So if you would just uh, pass this along and sign them. I think Mr. Mr. Stutzman chaired those meetings, so. Okay, so I wasn't here for this one. So I wasn't here for that. And I wasn't here for this. Well, I'm gonna get off easy. And I wasn't here for this. Wow, I get off easy. So we're just about wrapped up here. So um, is there any old business topics not reasonably anticipated? Hearing none. There is none. Okay. So we're going to move on to new business, and I think that's what's causing all the flurry of activity. The flurry so of activity has to do with a missing piece of the computer. Okay. Um, and so, um, if you're watching at home, this is item six, new business. Amir Miki, 133, 134 Southeast Street informal review of proposed mixed-use building, 48 dwelling units and six retail units. And we're missing something. Do you, um, Mr. Liu, do you have boards? I have um, a bunch of potted drawings and I can put the site plan up if you'd like. Okay. Um, oh, um, apparently we can get it up, so oh, okay. yeah.
So this is an informal review of pro a proposed mixed-use building, 48 dwellings, units, six retail units. So it's not technically, a, well, it's not a public hearing. It's just a chit-chat. Chit-chat. That's a good way to put it. Um, yeah, as you know, um, this sorry, project to, would be. You have to introduce or, yourself. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. I'm Michael Liu with the Berkshire Design Group. Um, we're the um, uh, site consultant for this project. Um, the applicant, the owner of the land and um, applicant is Mr. Amir Michki, and he hasn't shown up yet. But uh, um, this project, uh, the award, um, reviewing authority is the zoning board, but with this type of project, as you know, they t would typically um, have us come to the planning board for recommendations and review on design aspects, site issues. Uh, Chris? I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I believe this would come to the planning board as a mixed-use building for site plan review, and then if there were um, okay. associated special permits, those would also be granted by the planning board. Um, so I um, don't mean to contradict you, okay, but no, I that's think okay. that's the track I, that I we're on. I had read in the zoning from the, the use table, it seemed like it was the um, zoning board, but that might be outdated. I don't know. Well, let, let's move either forward. Way, that'll way, get settled. Either way, yeah, yeah. You're either gonna, way, you're going to look at it. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So if you look at the diagram or the the image up on the screen, um, the site is actually two parcels. I don't know which one to point to. <laughs> for the, but um, no, it doesn't work up there. Nope. Okay, it's 133 and 143 Southeast Street, just south of the Florence Bank um, parcel. Um, in the East Amherst uh, Village Center, I guess it's known as, this, this uh, cluster um, at the intersection of Southeast Street and Route 9. Um, both parcels combined are roughly an acre and a quarter, slightly less. Um, and the proposal, as you know, let me think, let's see. Okay, this is a conceptual site plan. It's a little different than the one that um, you have a copy of. We've revised it since the applicant kind of gave us a new floor plan, and we actually increased the parking by a few spaces in this color plan versus the one you have from 58 to 65. Um, the building is an L-shaped building, and the applicant is going to be asking for a zero setback on the street side and the north side to the Florence Bank. Um, and that's what this uh, site plan shows, the brown building being up, pressed up against the um, street line and the property line to the north. Um, the building itself, the footprint is about 14,000 plus square feet, I believe. <laughs> Um, and <coughs> coupled with the paving on site, uh, shown in the gray and the walks that are in the um, tan color, the coverage on this site would be somewhere, let me think if I remember this, in the neighborhood of 69%, just under the 70% allowed um, site coverage. Um, we haven't worked out, obviously, the details yet. We're trying to just get some informal feedback from the planning board on issues that, you know, you would see, any recommendations you would have um, as we proceed forward. The street line, um, or the Southeast Street right-of-way in this area is, I think it's almost like 120 feet wide. So I'm going to point up here behind you. Um, so the street's actually out here, and there's this like very wide green belt in front um, of the property. Um, the building itself, the, the plans that are, um, I guess maybe I'll flip through those real quick just to orient you. So this is oriented a little differently with north going sideways uh, to the right. Um, yeah. So Southeast Street would be down here. So first floor plan uh, has a commercial slash retail space at the south and north corners, um, the north being at the intersection of the two wings. You can see those blank spaces. The rest of it would be um, units, uh, residential units on the first floor. And then the second 
well, he's calling it level one versus ground level, but the second and third floors have the same footprint with uh, residential units, um, same number on, on each of the floors. Um, that's the roof plan, it's a gabled, it's, it's planned to be a gabled style uh, building with dormers facing the street on the north side. Um, a typical unit layout, these, these truthfully are shown almost as efficiency type apartments. They're rather small. Um, you know, you enter into a kitchen space, it opens up into a living area, and then it, uh, either to the right or left is, is uh, the bedroom um, with an attached bathroom in the oh. center. So the, the bathroom cluster for both units is, is clustered there in the, in the center of that block. Um, Elevation-wise, um, Mr. Mitchkey, I would say we've done some projects with him in Hadley. He's known for brick buildings. If you're familiar with the uh, two Auto Express, one ac across the street from this, and the um, new, what does he call it? The, well, the development at the Mill Valley Road and Route 9 intersection. Um, so as you can see here, this is represented to be, I think, brick with some kind of stone. Um, man, um, you know, lower level, on the lower level, gabled roof. Um, I think that's all we have for images. Okay, I'm just gonna flip back to the site plan. Um, you know, we, obviously we, we, you know, we have to work out the grading and the site. Um, as you probably are aware, there, this is a l kind of a low area. There's high ground water, so we'll probably have to build the site up. Um, there is an isolated wetland, a jurisdictional isolated wetland right in the center of the site. Basically, it would be right where that island is shown in the parking lot. And uh, so there would, have to, there would be some reclamation or um, replication involved. Um, we haven't talked to conservation about that and how we're going to handle it. Um, my thought is that um, we would like to replicate it hopefully off-site on another Mitchkey parcel. He owns several pieces of land along this stretch, as you probably are aware. The rest of the land to the uh, south and um, west are owned by Amherst College, um, pretty much conservation land. Um, and what we envision is that we're gonna have to be using um, this, this bottom southeast corner of the site and the north, I mean southwest and northwest parts of the site for drainage purposes. Um, once we did get some calculations going, figure out you know how big uh, any detention basins need to be. Um, and we haven't figured out if there's gonna be open basins or perhaps um, an underground type detention basin under the parking lot or a combination of, of both. Um, I think that's the direction we're probably gonna be going in, a combination of, of, of both types of drain um, detention basin, open and um, an enclosed underground system. Um, we are also close to wetlands. You can see on the, on the rendering, there's all these red lines which represent this. Well, here's the wetland offsite here on Amherst College land. There's another sliver up here. And the isolated wetland jurisdictional is right there. Um, all these red lines indicate the offsets, 25 foot for the driveway, 30 foot no build, um, 75 foot, I think in this um, for, for commercial purposes, uh, set building setback, and then the 100-foot buffer you know, out here. Uh, oops, right there. Um, so there's, there are some issues. It's, it's admittedly a pretty dense development. Um, I think we all know that there was, there's been talk about rezoning these parcels you know, from years back, and I don't, I don't think that was ever done. It's still zoned um, village. I forget, v, uh, is it BC? It is village, uh, Business Bus Village Center, business. and I think that was the result of the rezoning. Oh, okay, all right, so, all right. Um, we, we have some data up here. I'm not gonna go through it all, but there's the, the zoning requirements um, and parking requirements. Um, obviously, with the zero setback, we're asking for relief on the 10-foot uh, front and side setback requirements. Um, and on the parking, um, if you total up the residential, the, the number required for residential use at two spaces per unit and the uh, small commercial, which is about 2,200 square feet, 
we need a total, or it's required to be a total of 101 spaces, I think, 94 plus seven. This plan, as I mentioned, shows 68 parking spaces. Um, so they would be um, asking for relief from um, the parking requirement. Um, the trend has been, you know, a, a, a lesser number of parking for apartment residential use, almost basically one car per unit, um, even though, you know, a lot of zoning, you know, reflects, still reflects two, two spaces per unit or even one and a half we've been seeing. But um, again, you know, we'll have to make an argument for, for that, uh, asking for that relief. Um, and um, I guess that's it, short and sweet. If, if we could, you know, I guess hear some comments from the planning board about um, any thoughts you have on the site, the design, layout issues. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to explain why um, Mr. Liu is here and Mr. McChee will come shortly. Um, we reviewed this project um, a month or so ago with them and um, they had some questions about whether the planning board would entertain the idea of a very um, minimal setback on this property, particularly the front setback as a result of the um, right-of-way being so wide in that location. The right-of-way is uh, the edge of pavement to the property line is about 66 feet. So they've already got a front yard of a significant amount of, of grass. However, that grass does belong to the town. So um, we thought it would be a good idea if they met with you at an early stage to get a sense of whether you would um, consider this uh, um, lesser setback. Um, the required setback is either 10 feet or a minimum of 10 feet, a maximum of 20 feet in this zoning district. Um, so they're asking for zero setback. Um, if oh, you wait, we can. We can reduce that. We have the ability. Yes. Through special permit. Through special permit, you could reduce that. So I spoke with the building commissioner, and if you don't mind, I'd like to make a few more comments. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So the building commissioner was a little concerned about um, any protrusions from the building or footings that might overlap into town right of way or onto the adjacent property. So he, he said that uh, the building really needed to be pulled back at least enough to allow um, the footings to be appropriately placed. Um, the other thing is that there was, um, Mr. Liu sent a set of drawings earlier, it was either yesterday or today, that showed a grading plan for um, the building. And it did show some grading within uh, that portion of the property that's owned by the town. And um, this piece of property here is actually an extension of the East Common. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's kind of a precious piece of ground um, for the town, you know, the common's been there for a long, long time. And so um, at least planning staff, and I spoke with the assistant um, to the town manager, would be very cautious about allowing any kind of grading within that town common area. Um, and then there was another uh, potential, and I don't know whether this is still being considered, but. At one point, there was a potential for um, trying to repl replicate wetland in that area, and that didn't seem to be um, a good idea as far as the assistant town manager was concerned, who's very much in, in, in tune with what the Conservation Commission might or might not accept. So again, I don't understand whether that's really still part of the proposal. But So from staff's point of view, um, we think that um, min, um, you know, a, a lesser setback than 10 feet could certainly be uh, considered, but a zero setback probably isn't realistic, and um, whatever grading would go on should really be on the private property rather than in the town uh, right of way. So on the other hand, um, we have zero setback on other parts of town, and, and builders are able to build, and I think there's something either in it's either in our zoning by law or in principle that there is some protrusion allowed into the public space. In other words, it, where we have zero setbacks already, that's the exact same issue of gutters or, or window frames or whatever protruding into things that are not part of the body of the building protruding into it. So there is, you know, one East Pleasant, there has to be that exact same. And also uh, Kendrick Place, there has to be that they have the awning that protrudes over the public space. Those are zero setback buildings. 
Um, the building commissioner has made sure that the footings for those buildings are yeah. within the property line. Um, there may be some things that are yeah, above yeah. grade that um, protrude into the public space, but I believe they needed to get permission from the select board to do that. Um, sure. Um, this plan, this revised plan, um, actually has the roof overhang at the zero yeah. setback. Um, whereas your plan, I think, showed basically the footprint of the building. It's it's a technicality, but we would we don't have the footing design yet, obviously. And and uh, personally, I'm in agreement that it should be pulled back a little bit to allow for the construction of of those structural elements. Um, how you know how we proceed? I'm sure that the placement of the building is going to change slightly. Um, Regarding the grading, um, because the site is kind of low and flat, we have to start at a low end and then kind of fill, well, the low end being the south end because that's where everything's draining to toward that wetland. We have to start at a low point and then kind of grade it so that there's some pitch so everything's you know, able to drain. And as we go to the north, the grade's gonna rise higher than the existing elevation and that's why there's some grading back into the, um, across into the street line, into the common. Um, I can understand the concern about changing the topography, but if there, if there wasn't the grading that um, we showed on that grading plan, which was conceptual, you'd see a foundation or, or an extension of, of the wall down to the grade. So you'd have more exposed building, cement, blockers, or something of that nature to, to look at. Or, yeah. So zero, you know, zero setback buildings have you know, the entire city of Boston is. Um, and so when you get to, so, you know, when you get to that case, you simply do a, you know, you do an L-shaped. Rather than having a spread footing with the foundation going into the middle of it, you do an L-shaped footing. So it's not, you know, it's very common to be able to design zero setback buildings that avoid encroachment either below grade or letting that avoid encroachment below grade. Now staging on the other hand is a different issue but I mean we have a process for approving you know use of town land for you know for painting or for finishing the to do construction on the use the town land to construct the building so. Uh, Chris I think you said that the building commissioner had confirmed with one East Pleasant that the footings were contained within the property line. Yeah. So is it safe to <clears throat> venture from that that in any case where the building commissioner is assessing situations like this that he would confirm that footings are contained within the property lines? Yes he would. Yeah. But it did cause a redesign of the building. It started out with Kendrick Place and they had to redesign things in order to accommodate that. So that was after the fact of the planning board's um, review. Going forward, applicants would be aware of the building commissioner's yes. opinion of this. And yes. yeah, you, you generally you can't encroach on town land for you know any part of a structure other than we didn't. So you know, five years ago or whatever, we changed the measurement of a building from the furthest projecting element to the body of the building, and we haven't. The next zoning. <laughs> No, we should address that in the zoning bylaw uh, as to, so if we have, for measuring setback to the body of the building, there are always elements that will project beyond the body of the building, and we should address in the zoning bylaw how much of that. So you can never encroach on private property, but encroaching onto public, the public right away is a pretty typical, you know, is a pretty typical feature of zero setback buildings in you know urban areas but that that doesn't answer the question about whether or not you know that the you know the opinion as to whether or not this is the direction that the you know the board would support what oops oh go ahead sorry oh, I just wanted to say this is a good point in this project to get um, a sense of what the planning board thinks because um, mr. McChee is gonna have to you know spend a lot of money on architectural drawings, engineering drawings, et cetera, in order to actually submit um, an application to you. So if, um, if he had a sense of what direction you think he should go in, it would make things go more smoothly overall. Um, it, it looks from the uh, drawings that we've seen that uh, there's no access from the uh, east side of the building 
Uh, is that correct? Well, that's another thing we like to um, talk about. Right now, it's not shown. There's, for instance, there's no additional walk leading from the street sidewalk yes. to the building. But because there's retail commercial, you know, d developing an entry, let's say, on the east side, you know, would certainly in 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 fringe on the uh, or go over the, the into the street line and whether or not the uh, board uh, has any positive or negative feelings about that you know we'd like to maybe throw that out whether for instance a walk or even a patio or something might be able to be built at at the retail commercial uh, spaces with well, with connections to a pedestrian way given that this is uh, essentially an extension of the town common as uh, Ms. Brestrup was saying uh, it seems unlikely that uh, the board would be interested, or I shouldn't speak for the board. There you go. I'm not, I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to encroach on yeah. what is already town land for uh, pavement or access or anything like that. Um, I, I think in theory, the Continuous. notion that the, the, the zero setback, um, at least given the amount of space that there is of, of town common land there, is reasonable, but uh, again, the access to those buildings from the front, from the uh, from the uh, southeast street side uh, is is problematic. Um, I don't think you can have it both ways. Uh, sure. No, no. Okay, uh, great. Well, the question about what could occur in the public right of way is a question for the select board. So that's not something the planning board could decide. We could advise on it. I'm generally fine with the reduction, the setbacks, as long as the footings, as we discussed earlier, are contained within the property line and that the grading is recommended by staff is minimized or eliminated in the public right of way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, um, Jack. I wanted to know a little bit more about the elements of the town common in this location. Uh, I, uh, I'd, uh, Chris? Um, I had a plan and I thought I had it with me, but I don't. But um, if we could bring it, I don't know if we can bring up the GIS. Mr. Yeah, wait, right there, you can see it right yeah. there. Yeah. So if I could run into my office for a minute. Are, are, I think do you I mean the actual find. physical elements that are in the right of way now? Uh, yeah. Well, the, the, the fact that it's called a common so and it's, it's you know, uh, the, the function of the common at this location. So, so while Chris is getting that, so um, in a, you know, an analogy, of course, is the common right outside here, which is we think of the common as being a parcel of land right across the street from us, plus the piece of land across the street from the Lord Jeff, but actually the town common goes all the way to Amherst Farmers Supply. So it's basically a wide right of way that goes the town common actually goes on to, partly onto Amherst College land, then it becomes very thin um, near where the hill is, and then actually that parcel of land right in front of the gymnasium is actually part of the public right of way, part of the town common for the town of Amherst. So in a way, you can see on your um, floor plans, or on your site plans here, that the common that we think of as a common is at the very top of the the diagram, but really it's that whole, you know, fat okay. right of way is really what the, the East Common is. So unlike the Town Common out here, this Town Common really doesn't have um, sort of crossings on it, like private crossings other than the Amherst College crossings. So all the crossings are public, but this one has a number of private crossings, like the Florence Save, well, all the houses that are, um, I don't have the names of my streets. A number of houses have crossings, you know, driveway cuts across the common. In this case, there's the two houses um, here and here. They have the driveways. Um, I don't think there's any sidewalks or walkways that come out to the street. Um, so the, the, the right of way is very wide. At this point, it does narrow back down at the southeast corner. Yeah. The property line comes in a little bit and then goes back. And then the, then the right of way, I'm not sure what it is, but it, it's, it's like a 60 foot right of way on Southeast Street or something like that versus 110 plus. Um, so, you know, the majority of it is right now is, is just lawn area. I don't know if the town's 
ever going to be interested in using the common for any purposes. Um, right now it's just vegetated. There are a couple of um, evergreen trees. There's one here. One of them has died. Um, the survey shows three, but I think the closest one to the road has died and it has been cut down. And there's a large uh, catalpa tree right there um, that, you know, and generally catalpa trees are, are, you know, they're native, but they're thought of as weed trees. Um, and then there's a row of arborvitae that looks like it's just inside the property line but extends out into the common. And obviously those were planted for screening purposes, you know, to probably the commercial development at some time. Um, the bank parcel itself has a pretty wide green buffer along that south edge right there. Um, and I think that, I don't know if Mr. Mitchkey has had any conversations with the owners of that property, but they, I don't feel, I don't think they're hostile. <laughs> Does this aerial include, I know they expanded the parking lot to the rear of the bank. Is that oh, yeah. I did on this, I wonder? Um, I think that might be the edge of paving. Yeah. I can't be quite positive of yeah, that. Yeah, it looks though. like it's shown. Uh, Greg. Well, what maintenance, if any, is the town doing of that section of the common in front of the two uh, no. parcels? But actually, then, I'm sorry if I came in two minutes late. Chris told me he would be on his agenda late. So that's why. But anyway. Could you be at the microphone? Oh, I'm sorry. You, oh. Yeah. You'll have to come up and introduce yourself and use the mic. And you'll have to start over. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't have to say about the late part. Yeah, my name is Amir <laughs> Mikti. I'm the owner of these two property. Uh, what was I? We're <laughs> okay. talking about the, the maintenance. Yeah. Or, yeah. No, the, uh, since I purchased this, uh, they, it wasn't disclosed to us at the time of purchase, which was all right. Then it, it was brought up to us that this is common. And it was okay with me because, you know, it is beautiful and, you know, I like it to be that way. Because... Uh, and uh, but as far as the maintenance of it, you know, plowing, grass, mowing, it has all been it's done by you. Yeah. And throughout our discussion that we had with Chris and the building inspector Rob, and conservation to make sure that all the issues are being considered, we offered that you know if we could do some special landscaping to accommodate something, and they were open to that. But again, as Chris suggested, it is commons and it has to be subject to the town's approval. But as far as the question was concerned, no maintenance is done by town. Hmm. So, yeah, Chris. so I just passed along a drawing showing roughly where the common is, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. So who was, when the Foreign Savings Bank was built, who built the sidewalk? I assume that that was built as part of the Florence Savings Bank. I believe they built the sidewalk, yes. So to, to town standards or to town? Did they build that section too on the um, west side of Southeast Street? Because the sidewalk comes down, you can see it, and it stops right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, our plan, well, our plan conceptually shows an extension of that sidewalk to the, to, you know, to, into the... Yeah. Park. It seems like it would be nicer to have the sidewalk inboard, you know, sort of um, with, with the grass strip on the other like side that. of the, you know, on the oh. western edge of the common. But Closer, in, instead of right at the street. Right. In it would make actually, it would actually celebrate it as a common and actually people would help use people it. understand <laughs> that it's actually town property. Yeah. yeah. Redo the walk and kind of make yeah, it we, uh, when. I own also the Auto Express, I mean the whole quarter, and we suggested it, but at that time uh, there was hesitation that whether we should uh, expand the sidewalk, because we built the sidewalk by Auto Express the and by the, no. yeah, by the other, and also I should mention that on the other side, by the third house, I donated the land for the bus stop, so there's already, so that uh, right here? yes, okay. there's a bus stop right there. Where's the bus stop? It's right. It's oh, if you turn around. That for future, you, that you know, we would it's, have. It's, yeah. at this, it's in front of this house. Yeah. When the, the PVTA stop? Yes. It doesn't stop there yet, does it? No. Yeah. Okay. But I, uh, uh, we had a okay. discussion. It's, and it's widened out. Isn't yes. It? Yeah, yeah. And we donated it, there, and it is, when they were doing the pavement for Southeast, we did all the necessary infrastructure for the 
you know, I, fire I, hydrant and I, everything. I really like your uh, comment about the sidewalk being inboard because you can see at the uh, bank parcel, you, we've got the sidewalk that comes in over here, and there's this green, you know, green belt at least. Um, but you know, that, that, that it, could be a consideration. And if further, the, if the sidewalk is inboard, then you have access to the uh, exactly. retail spaces. Yeah. Uh, in a much more purposes, uh, you know, traditional way. Sure. Mm -hmm. In fact, it sure. might, if a, <laughs> it might even cause a sort of a making even more mixed use out of this. So, so one thing I'm noticing is just the very limited retail that there actually is on the ground floor. But if this were close to the street edge and there was public sidewalk right along there, mm -hmm. then that might actually encourage you to yes. think about more retail rather than. Mm. Apartments, yes. Mm. But just further down, so just to the north, the sidewalk, you know, as you come off the identifiable part of the common, the sidewalk is inboard. It's, mm -hmm. and then it, yeah, as you come up to the cross, then it actually makes sort of a diagonal across. Yeah, right. If you go to the north of Route 9, yes. It's, yeah. Yeah. There's significant green, you know, yeah. along that stretch. I was just going to say that to me it makes sense to have the sidewalk along the road, but then also along the building. Because if it's along the building edge, then they can have easy access in, in and out of the building, and people can have easy access to those retail spaces. But I think you really do need a sidewalk along the road, too, because that's where people are going to want to walk. And there will be more development on the other side of the street, and people may even be wanting to cross back and forth. So, you know, this is really becoming more of a village center now. Yep. And so having the sidewalk along the street is, I, I believe, important, mm -hmm. along with potentially a sidewalk along the building edge. So, um, Jack. Um, if, if I were to ignore the common as being something uh, of, of a special nature within the town, because it, it looks like it's never going to be connected to the portion to the north, uh, would it be possible to allow parking on that side of the building and then work with the wetland uh, mm -hmm. as a stormwater, a natural stormwater area um, on the west side rather than wipe out a wetland? And you know, it's just it's just a thought to me in terms of working with the parking land, on I the suppose. common. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. I don't, yeah, I think it is. It looks nicer, especially for future development that I'm planning, hopefully, for the other side. I think it would be nice that, you know, there would be a commons and yeah, yeah. I think it would be very nice, especially that tree is really nice tree. Um, oh, I, I called it a weed tree, didn't yeah. I? <laughs> <laughs> but it's really nice. <laughs> May I say something? So I think we did talk to Mr. Ritchie about um, having a parallel parking along the roadway. At one point, that was something that we talked about. So I think that could be um, worked out, and it would be a very welcome part of the village center. But I think using that town common area for parking, a parking lot, just is not in keeping with uh, um, village center design. We want to have parking behind the building for the most part, unless it's parking on the street. So there is an opportunity to work with the town to have parking along the road. In, uh, so one of one thing that's happening here is that there, there's rem removal of one of the drive cuts. So right now you have two drive cuts, and so now we go down to one, albeit a bigger one. But I think that's a huge, you know, sort of advantage of making this a, you know, kind of a better place. And so to the issue of setbacks, I have no problem with either of the requests. And of course, the timing depends on, so this planning board will be intact for who knows, you know, well, at least until December, right? We'll be intact until December, but who knows what the next planning board will do. Have you talked to Florence Savings Bank at all about the zero setback I, on their side? No, I don't. But uh, in the few, uh, situation that we had, I mean, this is really the lawyer that, you know, shows up, it's floor saving, and he had no idea. When I asked him about 
this is what my plan is. He was basically, I think he was from Boston, even. He doesn't, he's not even from this area. Oh. But, but you no. did talk to a representative. I try, yeah. I, I, then we had a couple of meetings here about different issues in that area. I reach out to them, but they were They have clueless. a real estate guy who's actually, um, like, they have a real estate guy who's come to this board for the parking spaces, um, Kavanaugh or something like that. Oh, so they actually own that whole parcel? Ne between us? No, the north. The whole commercial development. Is, is it, are they the actual I owner? Be, I believe so. I forgot so. to look it up. Is it, we can't ask Chris. Yeah. Is, is Florence Bank the owner of the north parcel, the commercial development? I believe, they must, they, I believe they are. They must be because they're the ones that did the site plan review yep. application for the additional parking. Oh, great. They're good mm -hmm. friends of mine. Yeah. So, so one of their, um, their real estate guys actually on the South Hadley Planning Board. Um, I should mention, too, that they have landscaping there, and then they have a stockade fence that's about set back like eight feet from the property line. Um, so they've obviously done some screening and buffering. To the, to the, you know, this property. How high is the proposed building? 30 plus feet, yeah, it's three it's stories. The, yeah, stockade fence is not essentially yep. buffering yep. that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would be a good idea to speak to them about that with the zero setback. I have no problem conceptually with the zero setback on Southeast Street. I do wonder about the, uh, the zero setback on the, uh, on the other building side, whether that's gonna be too close, or or whether it's acceptable to them, or whether it's visually uh, appropriate, uh, it's it's hard to talk about that conceptually. But uh, it seems to me that that issue ought to be raised with uh, with Florence Bank. I was going to say that back there, it's all just you know, utility doors, basically no windows uh, on the south side of the Florence Bank structure. So I, I don't think there's a view shed argument yeah, from there room, but they would bring yeah. too, right? you never know what <laughs> 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 well it's also it's not just the their point of view it's it's the visual point of view from dr yeah. driving by their, their branding their you know could be anything yeah. shadows you know who knows solar panels um so um, I think the planning department would have more of a problem, um, well, and I, maybe I could include the select board too, I think, with the grading than yeah, with yeah. the possibility of a sidewalk along <coughs> the building um, within the town right of way. I think that select board could probably accept that, but to think of a slope graded down that really takes away the ability to use that portion of the common if the town ever wanted to. I think that that's going to be an, a little bit of an uphill climb, um, but Mr. McChee could potentially approach the select board informally about that too. So that they may think differently from the way I think. I, I think uh, we can. I think that in a way the I wish we had been part of the Florence Savings Bank discussion because in a way their portion of the common is in a way too over designed. You know, it's kind of. A, because, as I remember it, that has some, yeah, some, yeah. Has some sort of um, curvy things. Well, they, they have that sign, and I believe it's, you know, it's filled behind the sign, slightly yeah. mounded or something. Yeah, yeah. But that's but on their property, if you won't, is it? don't mind my, I checked okay. it today, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. But to get, to, okay, I'll, I'll go out there tomorrow and trust but verify. <laughs> Ron. How much of a slow, how much grading? Would there be how much of a slope into the common is contemplated? I think this, we, I mentioned this before you came in, but as you move north, the site's going to rise higher. So the, the finished floor of the building, as we have it right now, is about five feet higher than the existing, than the common, okay. than the elevation on the common portion. So, you know, we'd be seeing extra building or on that conceptual grading plan, it showed, you know, mounding up against it and then a gradual slope back down into the common. 
So, I mean, it, it could be done in a way that um, the area was still usable and, you know, flatter um, than what was shown. I think, I, I can't even remember, it was drawn at a one to five slope or something like that. Um, but it could be, you know, much more gradual. Of course, it would involve more grading onto the common. The way I see it, the common's not really usable because it, it kind of goes up and down and it's uneven and there's low spots. And if you go walk out there, it's, you know, it's probably it was an old, whatever, you know, cow pasture <laughs> at some time. Yeah, and it collects water too. And it's rains right, and the right. water stays There's low there. spots and, yeah. So this is not a public hearing, but we may have members of the public that would like to speak to this. So if it's okay with the board, I'll see if anyone out there wants to <clears throat> say, yeah, come, come on up, come on. And if, actually, if you guys could scoot over. I'm Dorothy Pam. Um, I have a question about the residential units. Um, I'm not sure I could tell from the scale, but what, can people have a chair? Can they sit outside? Do they have any access to green? I mean, who's going to live in these apartments? They look very small, and I thought perhaps it might be people who don't have too much money, and they generally like to sit somewhere um, in the evening when they come home. And I just didn't see any place for them to, to hang out or to sit. So I'm just wondering if that's part of the design. We had it, uh, I'm sorry, you'll have to, if, if sure. you want to, yeah. Oh, uh, we had the, uh, some, uh, in the, one of the version, we had it on the commons, that you know, people could you know, uh, use the commons as an area that they could sit and you know, socialize, and that was part of the, Right. But we didn't yeah. put it here because... Yeah, this, this plan doesn't sure. show yeah. um, gathering spaces, but we certainly could add those types of features on, on the inside, you know, on the west side. Um, there's green space, there's green strips between the parking and the building. There's, in this plan at least, mm -hmm. there's three entrances to the building at the south, at the, at the junction of the L, and at the uh, west end. And certainly those areas, you know, although, you know, some of them are small, but you could still have a patio or a gathering space where, you know, chairs could be put out or, or whatever. Um, okay. Thank you. I think that, I mean, obviously for a development like this, I think that's, that's a desirable feature. Yeah, yeah. We had it before. Anyone else from the public want to say? Okay. So do we, yeah, Mike? Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, from the uh, ground level plan that we have in our packet. Um, the um, the s six uh, commercial units seem to be grouped in two, one in each corner, um, but there appears to be only one access to those, or two accesses to those six units. Uh, are you planning on having doors to each unit? Uh, it's, it's a little confusing from the plan the, of what's intended. Yeah. Um, this is really the configuration of these uh, apartments <coughs> are a uh, work in progress because uh, we are uh, working on having a corridor so that you know it would be more s safer and it would be just you know one entrance and there is a high possibility that we would have we would bunch up this uh, the retail all together right. in just one in, so the, in that section in the very beginning so by the driveway Right. In terms of the uh, floor plan, you know, here, if you look behind you, you know, the retail, as we pointed out, are at the southern end here and at the L yeah. junction. And there's an entrance here and an entrance there. So um, access to the retail spaces would be easy, simple. Um, but I, is this a, a, a corridor to access the residential units? In this plan, in, in floor this, plan, this yes. Layout, yeah. But we are changing it so the retail is going to be all in one oh, section, oh, they're all okay. going to be together. Like all yeah. clustered? Yes. So this, this is not really representative no. of what you're talking about? No. No, I mean, uh, for the retail section part of it. Okay. The other question I had was, uh, how large are the individual uh, units? 650 units. 650 yeah, square feet? Square feet. Okay. Uh, 
Um, <coughs> I, I, I feel like there should be access onto Southeast Street to the retail or commercial space. Um, so if that can be arranged somehow with a sidewalk or, or, or whatever, I think that would be, uh, otherwise they're just, they're just office spaces, which you know, is also fine, but, but I don't, I, I, it's hard to, it's hard to imagine them being retail or public spaces if, if, if their back is turned to the street. I agree. Yeah. Um, and one thing that we haven't talked about at all that we should at least give them feedback on is, is parking. I'm fine with, I'm fine with the cutting back on the parking, so. Yeah. <laughs> So if there's a parking problem, they'll park across the street at Auto Express. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> we consider that. <laughs> uh, back to the square footage question. Um, if the un individual units are uh, 650, uh, it looks like the individual um, commercial units are something like 400 square feet. Is that is that right? No, uh, there should be there. Uh, it's going to be six unit of retail. Yes. So it's going to be six of 650. That's what it's supposed to be. OK. Yeah. Uh, what kind of retail do you expect in 650 square feet? We are going to be, it's going to be together. So we are talking about 2,000 square feet. Are you talking about six retail units? Yeah. OK. Yeah, six. So each one, each of the six is going to be 2,000 square feet. No, each, no. There is. You mean each block? Each block. Okay. Is 650. So, so there's going to be six of them stacked together for retail. Okay. But each of the six is approximately 650 square exactly. feet. Exactly. What kind of retail do you expect in that 650 square feet? I'm expecting the, to have a laundry mat that, you know, would uh, accommodate the people who live there and also accommodate people in the colonial village. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm envisioning. That I would think be one unit. Not one unit, you know. Oh, the all six units? Yeah, all, yeah. So it's one commercial unit that you're talking about. That's what you asked me, what is my opinion? I, that is what I think well, it would I'm be I'm just best. trying to get a handle on what so. you expect to have in this building. You have, expect to have one commercial laundromat and I expect to. Apartments. I think for the, given the uh, situation that we have with the limited parking, I think the uh, laundromat would be the best and you know, a small coffee shop maybe, but not more than that. Okay. Well, if it's a laundromat, then it doesn't need to have funders yeah. necessarily. Doesn't need what? Doesn't need to have street funders, then maybe, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah I, and I also for laundromat, the parking use would be very limited. Yeah. As so the, Rob suggested, it, you know, two would be enough. Yeah, I think it's in a, I mean, it's not really our purview, but I would encourage, you know, the, um, thinking alternate possible retail. Sure, it would be up for whoever wants to bidder, do business. Yeah. I know yeah. you just asked me and I said, fish, this is what, no, I can't. Monger, do. We need a good yeah. fish. <laughs> or the co-op. The, co the reason I ask and the reason I'm uh, somewhat uh, uh, reluctant to say this is a great idea, is that the whole notion of a mixed-use building uh, is mixed uses. A laundromat seems to me to serve the tenants of this building primarily, and only secondarily outside. So there's not going to be... No, whoever is going to rent that place, uh, definitely, you know, he has to do... I mean, you asked me, and that was one of the idea I had that, you know, perhaps, you know, one of a couple of those units that is for retail could be used for a uh, laundromat. But there are six of them. And those, you know, yeah. whoever, you know, you have to have entrepreneur who feel that, you know, wants to do some business there. I really cannot. <laughs> I think we have a, a difficulty of communication here. I thought you were saying that the bulk of the six commercial units would be devoted to one laundromat. No, I said no. I Sorry, I, I said that. You. That's how I understood. I said this. all these six units are going to be together. So then it would be divided depending on who. If somebody wants two units of it, or wants to have three units, 
depending on the whoever comes to rent it to yeah uh, colonial village does not have a laundromat they saying? do but it's not uh, very is it, they do hmm. but not adequate <laughs> yeah I think we're getting the number of people who are there yeah so to um, uh, so um, we wouldn't normally take a vote or anything like this because this is really meant to be informational, but has this been helpful? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes. But most important thing is because we are in the phase that now we want to really develop the, the setback is really makes a big difference for us. Mm -hmm. And, and, if and I heard a lot of empathy towards the idea of zero setback on Southeast Street and more ambivalence on the zero setback towards Florence Bank. It would help a lot if Florence Bank was on your side for you know for this so that's a harder one for us to grapple with because um, it's not facing the public street and it may or may not cause problems for you know for the neighbors but if they were in support that you know I think that would be helpful okay yeah as long as we could just make sure that you know yeah very there <laughs> with you you're in the same page that's what yeah. is important yeah. you know as chris suggested that because every time you change it is time consuming and you know it's just well so. you have till december so <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and actually we have four more members that aren't here tonight but yeah hmm. okay um i'm sorry yeah i'm sorry you'll have to come up yep Um, is this considered affordable housing? It's not. I don't think it would be. No. I'm, I'm trying to figure out who would who would want to live in six in that apartment. I used to teach at UMass. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an adjunct. And, uh, I'm sorry. Technically, we're supposed to uh, oh, please sorry. go through the chair. Yeah, no, yeah. I sorry. Yeah, go I ahead. I used to yeah. teach in, at UMass, and there were uh, many of my friends who used to commute from Boston to here to Amherst, mm -hmm. teaching at Hampshire College, teaching at UMass, and teaching at uh, Amherst College. And there was always shortage of good place for people, you know, who just come for a few days or, you know, want to, you know, and they want to just clean, nice, safe place. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm intending for young professional, that, you know, they could have a good place. So that is really my intention. So it's all rental housing and it's, um open to anyone that yes. Yeah, okay. yes okay thank you so much all right i think we're done all right. thank you okay thank you so much for your yeah, time thank you. Good yeah. <coughs> let's see minutes 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 Um, topics not reasonably, so we're on item 6B, yep. Um, so there is, a, I should have mentioned this under old business, a topic not reasonably anticipated. Um, I uh, didn't fully understand the process when we went through the process of amending the um, subdivision for um, Ms. Fetterman, Elsie Fetterman, and I didn't understand that, the, um, that there was an appeal period um, on the decision. So the decision was made to approve that amendment, and then we had to file a certificate with the town clerk. So we did file that certificate, and the appeal period on that was up today. And it wasn't until after today that we were permitted to have the planning board sign the drawings. So you did sign them back in April, but I'm going to have to ask you to sign them again. So um, shall I just uh, pass them along? Yep. And um, let's see, that's the old set. This is the new set. And I wasn't that. here for that, so do I not sign? Um, you weren't here to vote for that, yeah. so you could not vote, you could not sign, and then I'll get the people who were here. And um, let me see who was here, uh, if I can read this. I think that's Mr. Crowner, Mr. Bert Whistle, uh, Mr. Stutzman, Mr. Levenstein, and maybe Jack Jemsek. 
<laughs> Maybe I should. <laughs> well, no, that would be too. Are you trying to read the signature? I, I am. If you yeah. can't read it, it's probably mine. Yeah. <laughs> mine. So I'll pass these along. And I thought I had pens here. Um, do I have pens here? Here they are. I don't know which ones work, so I'm going to pass them all. Hey, can I keep going while we're doing that? Okay. Um, form A, A, and R. We have two form A's. So this is another one that's uh, hearkening back to the past. Um, uh, this is a plan that was um, signed by you last year. I'm going to show you um, the plan of where this property is. Uh, the A&R plan was signed last year, but it was never filed with the registry. So it has to be filed with the registry within six months of signing. So um, the gentlemen from Bacon Wilson are back. Uh, before you to have the plans uh, re-signed, okay? So I'll, I'll circulate this map showing where it is, and then I will show you the map itself. I should explain that this is property on Leverett Road. Oh, yeah. um, it's a little parcel that um, has its, I think it's well on another piece of property. So they would like to buy a property from WD Coles so that their well will be on their property. Um, they're not combining the two properties because Where of uh, certain zoning issues, but they're going to be uh, purchasing that little piece of oddly shaped property right behind their, their house. And that will be coming for, before you again because I think the little piece of property is in Chapter 61, um, so it will have to be released from Chapter 61 in order to be transferred. That's uh, for another day. To drill a new well. I'll leave these here for Mr. Schreiber to sign. Okay. Um, upcom upcoming ZBA? Oh, one more. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. That was only one. So we have another a and r and this one is um, related to the University Drive project. Um, there was a legal um, situation between the abutter and um, the people who own University Drive, um, the mixed-use building, Mr. Roberts. And um, as part of the settlement, um, Mr. Roberts has uh, agreed to, s to give, I believe, um, a two pieces of property to the abutter to the south, Ann Marley. Um, if you have questions about this, you may ask uh, Tom Reedy, who happens to be here in the audience. But I'll, I'll show you which, uh, where the strip of land is. So no action needed. I hear, I hear no objections. Um, upcoming ZBA. Anything ZBA wise? Maybe Mr. McCarthy can report on that. We received an application today for a 21 Kendrick Place, which is proposing to convert from an owner-occupied duplex to a non-owner-occupied duplex. May I add that this is Kendrick Place, the yeah, street? Yeah. The, actual, the actual Kendrick Place. <laughs> Um, do we have an interest in hearing that? No. Um, upcoming SPP, SPR, SUB? The only one that we actually have in hand is um, a site plan review application for a uh, sign. Actually, I think it might be a planning board special permit application. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's for a sign for the um, North Amherst Community Farm farm stand, and that um, will be coming before you probably sometime in July. Okay. 
Um, anyone want to report on their committees? I see none. Report of the chair, none. Report of staff? I think I have none. Okay. So actually, report of the chair, so many of you know that this um, meeting at the library of trying to bring together the people who voted on either side of the charter for a discussion is happening right now. It started at 7.15. So I was hoping to get you out. We were hoping to get you out by 7.45, but not too bad. So I imagine it's still going on. So with that, we're adjourned. And we meet next on June 20th. June 20th, okay. All right, all.